Hello and welcome to this edition of Minstrels on the Block. A special guest today, a man I have known and worked with off and on for the last five or six years, Mr. Will Dockery. Shake it bake. Rock the hell on, brother. If you need first, you're last. So, Will, tell me about yourself. Where were you born? I was born in LaGrange, Georgia, uh, a few decades ago. A few decades ago. <laughs> yeah. And spent a lot of time here in Columbus, here and there, back and forth. Off and on. In and out. So tell me about your family, mm. your parents, what did they do? Well, my dad, he was a, uh, he's from up in the uh, Tennessee area, Tennessee, North Carolina, Virginia, all come together. Wow. Fort Blackmore, uh, Nicholsville. Interesting, he, he, uh, he was from the same area the Carter family were from, which is wow. kind of cool. My granddad played fiddle, but that kind of got squelched. So I'm not sure if we can put that on TV, what happened. But <laughs> anyway, yeah. So you, there was some music in your family, uh, creativity? Then? Yeah, my granddad, yeah, he played fiddle, violin. You know, but, but, uh, and my dad, he, uh, he, spent, he went over into uh, World War II. Uh, he met my mom in LaGrange, barbecue, Sean Rock, shout out. And part of the, so the early history of the barbecue authority there going on. Cool. They're very important. Barbecue and, and, of course, Jesus, very important to Shadowville. Definitely. Yeah. Now, as far as, like, poetry, do you have, like, is there, was there something in your family that led you to be interested in poetry? Or did that well, I guess it was or? mainly uh, Popeye and Hank Williams that really led me into poetry. It was a combination of... Popeye's Poetics with Hank Williams. And Interesting. Basically, that was my early influences in poetry. Uh, got into a lot of comics and science fiction. You know, it's like folks like uh, Harlan Ellison was very big there. Then I got into poetry uh, and around junior high, uh, actual poetry, poets. Mm -hmm. I didn't really know anything about real poets uh, up until about junior high, but uh, I could see the poetics and the, uh, you know, the phrasing of Popeye and, of course, Hank Williams. That was, yeah. I think they're really overlooked as far as poetry goes. You know, it's, but uh, guys like William Blake, you know, it's history of Shadowville. It's like some are born to sweet delight, some are born to endless night, which led into the Shadowville thing of dark poetry, Rambo, Poe. We got into and then started getting into guys like Kerouac, you know, the Beats, you know, things like that, you know, these guys, you know. But uh, and basically the poetry, you know, kept going. So going back a little bit, like, what did your dad do? Well, uh, my dad, his career military up until uh, the early '60s. Mm -hmm. uh, he was in the cavalry, drove trucks. Troops, uh, uh, notably, he was in the uh, uh, the landing at Nagasaki right after the bomb was dropped. So he was like, he drove troops into Nagasaki and wow, and uh, got radiated. I'm a firm believer in mutation. I believe there's a lot of mutation involved in mm -hmm. in what's happening right now. God bless Japan. You know, I think we should probably go over. And do a benefit, shake and bake, brother. Brought the hell on. Yeah. Now, going into into your music, I guess one thing that would be really, really important to uh, definitely to expound on. Tell me about Shadowville. About Shadowville. Shadowville is sort of a string theory, it's alternate universe. It's like you know, what could have been, should have been. Thank God it didn't really happen that way, <laughs> sort of thing. Lots of. Uh, mm, it's possibly this. That's the Shadowville thing going on. It's, it's like it's like this right here. You know, I don't know if you can get a shot of that. This is some of the Shadowville stuff. But uh, we'll hold them up in a little while and uh, we can get some really the, good shots of them. It's basically the Shadowville. You know, the motif is like this new poem. It's tired of waiting. You tired of walking streets where we waited for you. Cruel daybreak tortures me with the sound and memory of your street corner smile. Dreams reveal too much to remember from black seedless night, midnight to feverish broad daylight. You never get older. 
You stand in the dark, dark side of the cold. Spring is trapped in your crystal. Shadowville is, uh, it's, uh, it's doomed, you know, but it's, uh, it's like a cheerful sort of doom, you know. Cheerful like, doom, yeah. Yeah, it's like, you know, you're there, you know what it's like, you know. Yeah, yeah. This happy-go-lucky uh, despair. Happy-go-lucky Devil Street. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's pretty much Shadow Hills. So tell me about your, uh, your I guess what you would it's call... It's like that quote, some are born to sweet delight, others born to endless night, William Blake. You know, yeah. it's, it's like basically it's, it's, you just take it and run with it. You know? He's got a lot of very, like Jack Kerouac, you know, Harlan Ellison... Uh, a lot of different types of of influences that are that are you know just a melting pot. Um, tell me about your, I guess, whatever you know kind it was your education in putting together poetry. Uh, well, I think I, I really got highly educated. Started going to the open mics, poetry readings, like he, uh, our friend uh, behind the camera there was talking back early nineties. Hi, back, Rusty. Back when downtown went from wig shops and prostitutes to actually the Buddy Nelms was very, yeah. you know, he deserves a lot of credit for what he did, him and Larry Rose, those guys. Sunken anchor. You know, putting together the loft, you know, downtown, yeah. Bazaar Earth, coffee shop. You know, because at one time, you know, it was, you know, it was very, it's like, like we're talking about, Shadowville. It's like, you know, it's like taking the darkness and making something out of it, molding it into something. And... Basically, what we're seeing now is uh, was his vision. It actually was a very good vision, and educationally, you know, uh, hooking up with guys like you and Connolly, you know, mm -hmm. actually bringing the poetry to a level that uh, uh, the people could actually understand and enjoy, because you know it's like only so much people can stand. Of I met Dara, blah blah, at the you know, coffee shop, the fat black pussy cat, whatever, you know. It's like, but you know. You, you know, three chords and a pack of lies, you know, and you definitely do a lot with it. I've know? got to remember that. So it's educational. My education, my best teachers, people like you and Mr. Connolly, uh, taught me, you know, how to pull out of the uh, the poetry ghetto, as in, in other words, sort of, you know. Yeah, and, and closing for this first segment, tell me about your actual, your, your poetry comics that you've done. Well, this, this goes back to the 80s. It's actually... There was sort of a, a little bit of an internet. There was Usenet back in the 80s, but back in those days, it was small press. You, you met people. It's basically the same as the internet, except we did it through snail mail. We did it through the post office. And there was a network of people, man. like this small press comic sampler. This was a friend of mine, Liam Brooks. He actually, he actually worked at Kinko's is how he got this going. Wow. And... That's how you managed to do these. But most of the uh, small press publications were just pretty much eight-page to 16-page uh, chapbooks or pamphlets, like uh, sort of like the sort of thing that Ben Franklin and Tom Paine kind of put together back in those days. And we traded these things off. It would cost just a few cents at the photocopy shop to print these things out and... And then stamps were like six cents back in the 80s. And we had uh, publications which we traded and sold these things. And a lot of these people survived. They, of course, to survive, you basically just uh, moved on into things like uh, Google Groups and Facebook, MySpace, which is almost the same thing, except you don't have to actually wait for the mailman to bring it to you. Yeah. It's a lot faster and a lot more... A lot more connective. So basically, these in those days, through the through the actual mail, would actually kind of stood in for what you would have as threads today, basically, like a swapping of ideas. But it would be through these instead of instead of internet typing or internet you know messages, or it's like a trading of your. Um, of your artistic skills, basically. Mm. Yeah, it was a, it was a collaboration. Uh, I guess it was, maybe it would be to uh, people that weren't a part of it. 
you may have seen or heard of people that would play chess through the mail. You know, like you, one guy would do, uh, one guy would send his move, and then you would send him back another move. And people used to, or pen pals. But basically, we took it to a different level. It would be like, oh, I was just telling Rusty about it. Let's, let's see. Oh, I think it was this one, yeah. Like this guy, I would maybe sketch out a pencil drawing and or maybe a, of some words, and then he would send it back to me, and then I would maybe scribble some, uh, you know, scribble some ink on it and send it back to him. Yeah, hold that up. Back and forth. You know, we would go back and forth. And basically, eventually, let's see, there's, there's the front page. Me and a guy named Sulzbach, he's also the, uh, just by chance, he's the guy that did the cover for Shadowville Speedway. But this is like stuff we did back in the 80s. And uh, it's basically, you would maybe sketch out some pencils for a comic strip, mail it off to another guy in Massachusetts or or China or wherever, no, not China, but maybe uh, Amsterdam or something. And then he would send it to another guy who would maybe write some words on it, and it would just float around and eventually... That's uh, actually really, really cool. And I've actually heard of people doing that with music, but back in those days it was very difficult yeah. because you would have to mail cassette tapes and all this sort of thing. But I know that some people did try that. But, you know, it's, basically it's the collaborative thing that, you know... The thing that, like, we got going with the uh, Shadowville All Stars of, you know, you take five or six guys and or uh, two dozen, and, yeah, yeah, and just put them <laughs> together and see what happens. You know, collaborative art. On that note, we're going to take a stroll down a random street in Shadowville with one of Will's videos, I believe, and uh, we'll be right back and we'll get into Will's. Music is poetry evolving into his music. Mm -hmm. See you shortly. Mm -hmm. 